Aiden Hutchinson had one of the greatest rookie seasons in the history of the Detroit Lions franchise. He finished with 9.5 sacks, 53 pressures, and 37 quarterback hurries. But it's what Hutch did in the team's final 10 games that made him an absolute matchup nightmare for opposing offenses to have to deal with. Hutch showed the ability to consistently pressure the pocket each and every week due to his power and strength, and his teammate James Houston finished second among NFL rookies with 8 sacks, while Kirby Joseph had 4 interceptions after moving into the starting lineup as safety in place of an injured Tracy Walker. Malcolm Rodriguez started 15 games at linebacker, but the team's biggest wild card heading into 2023 is Josh Paschal. Paschal's rookie year was spent recovering from an injury and fighting for snaps at edge. He flashed at times, but the 2023 season is when we'd expect him to see how he fits in with the team. Interestingly enough, instead of clearing a path for him, the Lions retained Romeo Aquara and Charles Harris. Paschal's development will be one of the biggest things to watch out for in training camp. Collectively, Lions rookies finished with 7 interceptions, tied for the most in the NFL this season, and 20 and a half sacks, the most in NFL history. The defense became even more powerful after signing Emmanuel Mosley, who had a 43.6 passer rating in his 5 starts last season with no touchdown passes allowed. Although this is far from a long-term signing, getting a 26-year-old corner who allowed just one touchdown over the past two seasons, it's a massive upgrade to a defense that finished 30th overall against the pass in 2022. Brad Holmes also went out there and picked up Cam Sutton, who is coming off of the best season of his career in 2022, where he totaled 15 pass breakups and three interceptions. He also held opposing quarterbacks to a 65.3 passer rating, which was a massive improvement from the 104.9 passer rating he surrendered in 2021. Trading Jeff Okuda was difficult as a fan due to his potential, but unfortunately he isn't a reliable piece on a playoff team due to his inconsistencies, health, and the amount of money that he would have costed as a first round pick for his fifth year option. Brad Holmes didn't draft him, so it's not his fault that he only got a fifth round pick in return. But this set up a perfect opportunity in the draft for the Detroit Lions at number six to take Christian Gonzalez, who tested incredibly well at the combine. But of course, they didn't do that. Instead, Brad Holmes would trade back from number six to 12 in last month's draft to select Jameer Gibbs at Alabama, a running back. At first, when I made my Lions video three weeks ago, I hated this pick. The positional value of a running back at 12 is a little bit questionable, but then you start to think about it. What did the Lions struggle with last season? Running in space at that second level. The Lions offensive line is absolutely elite. They have three pro bowlers on it. But Jamal Williams certainly is a short yardage running back. He doesn't really give you much juke moves or the ability to break tackles. There's a metric that measures how elusive you are as a running back and Jamal Williams was 41st of 45 running backs last season that qualified. For example, David Montgomery was 12th. Lions were not very great at running the ball from weeks 9 to 18. They ranked 21st in rushing EPA per true media. During that span, 20.5% of the team's rushes went for negative yards or no gain, the 8th highest in the league. The Lions averaged 1.46 yards before contact, 18th during that span, and 2.66 yards after contact, 19th. The reason for this was injuries on the offensive line, the absence of DeAndre Swift. Teams were also loading the box more in the second half of the season. The Lions were facing eight-man boxes at the eighth highest rate in the league. It was clear that the team needed more elusive players who can break tackles prompting them to draft a running back at 12. Lions, they understand that, look, we need an electric player out of the backfield that we can move around that's going to help this offense, especially move the chains. That's what Jameer Gibbs does. He moves the chains, man. 135.7 all-purpose yards per game. That was among the top 15 players in all of college football. Yes, we had a top five offense, but it still needs to improve, right? You look at the Kansas City Chiefs. They had the number one ranked offense last season. You think they're just going to sit there and be like, it was one, we don't need to improve on it. No, you want to make sure that you don't regress, but you also want to make sure that you're getting better and better at every single area of the field. And running the ball is something that the Lions do a lot of. Jared Goff had a great season, but the scheme of the Lions is run the football, run the football, and run the football. Their strength of the offense is the offensive line. There's no question about it. So to go out there and to get an electric, speedy player who can also line up, anywhere on the field. He can line up outside. He can line up on the slot. Brad Holmes was at that Alabama-Texas game, guys. You think Gibbs ran the ball that well? I forget how many carries. I think it was he rushed for 22 yards at the top of my head in that game. 
but he also had another you know, 74 receiving yards and a touchdown was the best player on that field as a receiver and he's a running back so i'm looking at gibbs and i'm saying that he's going to make this offense even better and if the lions if they go from the fifth best offense to the second best the first best offense yes they're going to be one of the best teams in the league there's no question about it if you have the best defense and a decent offense you're not winning the super bowl if you have the best offense and a decent defense you can win the super bowl the chiefs defense last season wasn't that great it wasn't elite the chiefs number one ranked offense went four for four in the red zone in that second half of the super bowl and they beat the eagles defense so a good offense is always going to beat a good defense that's just how it is and the lions right now look like they could potentially even have the number one ranked offense assuming that jared goff can continue to improve and jameson williams can come back i'm looking at Ahmad Ross st brown uh the sam La Porta, who the lions took in the second round very good player but yeah there's, there's weapons for sure in this offense uh, losing dj chark definitely hurt of course but you can't really rely on deandre swift and dj chark because these guys just seem to be always getting injured so now with that being said let's talk about this 2023 lions draft class so the thing with hendon hooker is this wasn't a pick in the sense of he's our jared goff replacement this was more so hey look now we have a high level backup something that Holmes said all offseason he wanted to do add a qb to the mix and he gets one in hendon hooker Hooker, he had 27 touchdowns against two interceptions across 11 starts before suffering a torn ACL late last season. Very high character prospect, which is a large reason why the Lions drafted him. Jared Goff did say last month to us, the media, that him and the Lions haven't discussed a contract extension. So basically, if Goff doesn't elevate his game moving forward, then Hooker can take over. Or if, God forbid, Goff were to get hurt, Hooker can take over. But I think this is more so, you know, Jared Goff is our guy, but we still need a backup in there. In terms of Jack Campbell, a lot of people did not like the decision at number 18 to take an off-ball linebacker. And I completely get it. Once again, the positional value isn't ideal. But Jack Campbell had 128 tackles last season. He's six foot five. He's the most athletic off-ball linebacker in all of the draft. He's also elite at operating in short space. His combine three cone drill was 6.74 seconds. His short shuttle was 4.24, which led all linebackers. I mean, he closes quickly. He can do everything on the football field. He's a film study warrior. If I think of Jack Campbell, I just think of Dan Campbell, right? It's just like the, the Sam Laporta pick. When I think of a tight end, Sam Laporta, you know, I think of Dan Campbell. So, you know, we're looking at captains, guys that just go out there and compete at the highest level possible. Laporta, he's more of an all-around tight end. He's not going to be a pure receiving one. But he's tough as hell. Craves contact, he's bling and more than capable of being a blocker, of course, at the next level. His strengths are his short area quickness, large hands, toughness, and intangibles. I know it's easy to make the Hawkeyes comparison for, of course, TJ Hawkinson, but Laporta, he's more of an all around player, so I don't think Lions fans have to be worried about that. I mean, no disrespect, TJ Hawkinson was a hell of a player, but I just think Laporta is going to be a lot better for the team. My favorite pick for the Lions in all of the draft, and it isn't even remotely close, is going out there and getting Brian Branch at 15. Oh, did I say 15? My bad. I meant 45. Brian Branch was top 15 on my board, and he falls all the way to the second round. The Lions traded up to get him. He's a legit building block for this Detroit secondary. Very versatile and talented defensive back who can play anywhere. Branch can play safety, nickel, some outside corner, and even is an effective blitzer. The Lions are set at defensive back, Kirby Joseph, Tracy Walker, CJ Gunner Johnson, at nickel, Emmanuel Mosley, Cam Sutton, Jerry Jacobs at outside corner. But Branch is so good that he will find his way onto the field. The nickel spot is valuable in Glenn's defense. Of course, talking about Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator for the Lions. And Branch is the best nickel in the draft. He can fill in at safety or nickel in a pinch this season and serve as a long-term piece if Gardner Johnson leaves in free agency next year.